Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at AskAdamTorres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, today I have David Kogan on the line, and he's a patent attorney and partner over at the law offices of Fish Even. David, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate All right. it. Glad to be here. So, David, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to talk about helping startups to secure their intellectual property rights. A lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives listening to this right now, and uh, securing intellectual property rights is a big, big deal. Um, but before we get into that, I do want to go a little bit further into what you're doing over at the law offices of Fitch Even. Tell us a little bit more about the firm and what you do, please. So Fitch Even is Chicago's oldest intellectual property law firm. We've been in continuous practice for over 160 years. The firm was established in 1959. We focus only on intellectual property, which means we only deal with patents, trademarks, and copyrights, and associated litigation and agreements. And um, we represent clients of all sizes, startups, medium companies, and even industry giants, such as, for example, Walmart and Kraft Foods. Um, our goal in general is to help people secure patent rights for their inventions and secure trademark rights for their uh, logos and brand names. That's awesome. And, that, and that's why I wanted you on the show, David. If there's a person that I want on the show to talk about this, it's going to be yourself and your firm. Uh, I mean, you've been doing it a very long time, very established. So let's just dive right into the topic. So um, helping startups uh, secure their intellectual property rights. Um, where do you want to start this topic? It's a big topic. So I think uh, if, if this will be interesting for your startup clients, I think the first step for most companies is to establish a name of the company. Uh, and I think when you establish a name, the next thing you think about is the name of your product. Uh, in, in this regard, you're probably interested in securing some kind of trademark rights or even uh, before you even secure anything, you have to do a search and figure out if the name that you want to name your company is available. Uh, obviously, people uh, want to save money initially, especially startups, and they do their searches on Google. But many times people call me and say, oh, my God, I've been in business for two years, and now I got a letter from this giant saying that I'm using their name. They want me to shut down. They want me to discontinue selling, and I'm in such trouble, and help me. And, you know, honestly, I would like to help people like that in the beginning when they form their business mm -hmm. uh, so that they avoid having to call me two years later and panicking. And so I think when a company is established, and when the company is looking at their name and their possible logo and their possible product lines, it would be a good idea to talk to an intellectual property attorney and figure out if they are entitled to use these names and whether they're looking at you know trouble down the line if if, if somebody else owns these rights. Where do you think, and I, where do you think, and I don't want to, I hate to use this, like it's not a scare tactic, but it's reality, because I know it's reality in your, in your life day to day when you, um, when you get these type of calls. So what is, what is somebody like that, and I know this, I don't want to generalize, because I know it's going to be different for each business, depending on what, you know, what, what the situation is, but what is it, what does that process look like? Because I do want to kind of juxtapose what it looks like getting, getting it all done in the beginning versus having to make that call to you after you receive a letter. Can you kind of give us a feel for the differences in those processes? Because my goal here today is to um, hope hopefully some of the people that are that could use it, that they haven't made that call, I want them to make that call before they do get a letter possibly. Okay, so uh, for example, um, we, uh, like I said, we our firm only does intellectual property uh, stuff. We do not do corporate stuff. So if, if you know, if, if somebody established a corporation um, and they already f uh, picked a name for the corporation, it's already too late, right? So mm -hmm. the, the, I think that the best time to to call us would be to say, hey, we're thinking of opening a corporation in this mm -hmm. name. Is this name available? And so what I would do as a patent and trademark attorney, I do a search. We search. Uh, Google, we search all sorts of databases. Most importantly, we search the United States Patent and Trademark Office database to see if anybody else owns that name. Uh, if the name looks to be available, then we advise 
you know, the people that the name is available, you can go ahead and form the corporation with that name. So that's the first step. Um, as, you know, the corporation uh, or the startup slowly develops, they eventually come up with either a product or a service, and, and they probably want to have a name for that. And, and it's the same process. They would call us and say, hey, we're thinking of using this logo or this slogan for our service or, or this brand for our products. Can we do that safely? And again, we would do a search, and you know, it takes a, less than a week, and we would come back and say, hey, based on our review, it looks like this name is available. You're not likely to run into trouble. Or we could say, oh, my God, this is owned by, uh, you name it, Google, Amazon, Walmart, whoever. Don't do it. You're going to get sued. So it, and that sounds very and David, that sounds very painless. That doesn't sound very painful. That sounds like a very easy process. Easy, easy process, and it's easy for us to do a search on a name. It's not complicated. Trademarks, yeah. by definition, are, are, are much easier than patents. Patents are much more complicated. And so let's uh, let's take the other side of things. So let's say that somebody maybe is getting one of these letters or something else. Like, what does that process look like? Because it sounds easy, right? In the beginning, you just you're form, and as you said, you're going to form a, a new company or corporation, and you want to see if it's available. You want to see, um, you, you just start the relationship there so that you're covering everything right from the beginning. Um, let's take the other side of things now and say that maybe they are getting that letter. I mean, what does that what does that look like? Because that sounds painful. <laughs> Right. So t typically what happens is you would, you would get a letter from a law firm that represents the competitor. And uh, if, if uh, you get a letter from a law firm, you better be sure that they're getting ready to sue you for using their uh, trademark. And so if you do not go and hire a lawyer or at least talk to a lawyer to defend you, you're going to be facing a law firm, you know, and it's their business to be in the intellectual property litigation. It's not your business as a business owner to defend the you know, a trademark infringement lawsuit. So if you get such a letter warning you that you shouldn't be using the name, if you have the ability to stop using the name and completely change your business, completely discontinue the, the use of the name, that's fine. You can respond to, to whoever wrote you the letter and say, I'm very sorry, uh, we we're discontinuing the use, uh, go for it. This is your name, we'll never use it again. And then at that point, you better hope that they don't send you the next letter and say, oh, by the way, you used our name for a year. You owe us $100,000. Um, mm. And so our uh, job that just, is that just hurt my side a little bit, David. You <laughs> just punched me in the stomach. I'm like, oh, that that hurts. You're like, wait a minute, I didn't know. I didn't call David earlier. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can right. I not pay you right. 100 grand? No, we want our money. <laughs> Exactly. So bottom line is you, you come to us and if we can defend you, if we can come up with some kind of a, a theory that that, that, that that works to show that you don't infringe and, you know, maybe you walk away clean. Also, it's our job to negotiate, right? We're lawyers. We do agreements. We do all sorts of settlements. It's our job. So lawyers talk to lawyers. It, you have a much better chance of walking away, uh, you know, either with your business intact or maybe not having to pay a lot of money to settle a case. So that's kind of what we do for trademark uh, situations. That's awesome. So David, um, that being said, if somebody's listening to this and they want more information on Fitch even uh, or to work with uh, you and your team, I mean, what's the best way for them to connect and to follow up? So our our website is FitchEven.com, F-I-T-C-H-E-V-E-N.com. My email address is dcogan at FitchEven.com. My direct phone number is 818-330-3553. Fantastic. Well, David, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about um, what we need to know really about protecting ourselves, especially startups on their intellectual property rights. So thank you for that. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the FY iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us uh, some comments on the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And David, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate it.